today we're going to talk about regen braking. Now this one's going to be a bit different because it's regen braking a series wound DC motor. Some of the principles will be carried on to the free phase controller and some will just keep be completely thrown in the bin. But I'll tell you which ones. Cool, let's get on with it. What have we got today then? We've got... <laughs> I'll just go through it with you. This motor here is just going to drive and this is going to simulate the car going down a hill. This motor is going to be our actual drive motor because the controller can only drive and brake uh, it can't do both at once so when when you when it comes time to brake down a hill it'll switch off the drive and switch over to the brake in and then start PWM in the brake in if that makes any sense so this one here is just going to be running like a generator we won't we'll be driving it via a drive belt and so this will just be a generator and we're going to use PWM to vary the amount of braking you get into a capacitor now so how do we start when your engine when your motor is trundling down a hill with a two-ton vehicle on it it's got the potential to generate an awful lot of electricity in a short amount of time now pumping this energy straight into the battery pack that's not going to be very effective because batteries can only accept a charge at a certain rate but the amount of power you can generate from the motor is ridiculous so what you want to do instead what what I'm going to do is pump it into a supercapacitors which can accept charge very readily and then discharge it through a buck converter or a buck boost converter sorry into back into the battery pack over time so say like you had you went down a really steep hill you had your brakes on um, it, you were building up all this power in the supercapacitors, then not much of it's going to be lost. Then, after that hill, your supercapacitor buck boost converter will be then slowly just pumping that back into the battery. So you've actually captured near on all of that energy rather than just trying to thump it into a battery. And what happens is, if you try and thump too much into a battery, it's just going to act as a resistive load. That energy is not going to be captured by the battery fast enough. So the, it, you still get the break in, but not all the energy is captured. So let's have a little demonstration. What I've got is on our main drive motor, which would be now running down a hill. Quite simply, I'm giving it a very small current, 5 volt, at 1 amp. So it's receiving, oh, what's it receiving? 5 watts. Silly me. <laughs> that's receiving 5 watts of energy right now. So that's nothing. And that's very similar to your car alternator. I found instead of using the series uh, winding to power this one. And like in the first video. I found it was quite unpredictable. So you didn't get a smooth ramp. Um, what would happen was. I tried it earlier. When I started to increase the PWM. You had absolutely no break in. And then you'd have um, a sudden roof. <laughs> You know, sudden like you know, pull of braking, and that wouldn't be that wouldn't be nice to drive with. So instead, what I've what I've decided to do is part of the controller. You'd have to supply, uh, so you get your contactor to switch over to braking mode, and you just have to supply a constant five volt to your state of winding. Depending on the motor, you might want to supply it more or less. It only needs a very small current anyway. That will just give it a magnetic field, and when the rotor turns around, that'll generate power for you that you can manipulate. And, and pump back into your supercapacitors. So, yeah, I've got that rectified, although it's already rectified. This is just to clean up any spikes or whatnot. If you get any spikes in the wrong direction, that'll rectify it. And So, although there's a lot of wires there, so I'll just tell you what's going on. So, the, the plus and minus, plus is on the right-hand side. Your plus is going to the neck, the what would have been the ground rail of your IGBTs on the original circuit. I'm using the original circuit so it's easier to follow, but obviously you'd use these instead with a switchover relay. And on the positive side of what would be the RGBT drive circuit goes to the negative of your capacitor because it's coming from it's coming from the negative, if you can see that. And then the positive straight to the capacitor. Obviously, this capacitor is not going to form much of a braking effect at all. As you can see, it's charged. But I just want you to see the, show you the difference. 
We'll see that in a minute. And you've got three ways, three three major ways to do regenerative breaking. The one, the first one is you could have set levels. I don't know. I think Tesla does this. You can have set levels of regen. So when you take your foot off the accelerator, um, it will give it a certain amount of regen breaking. Um, I don't. I think that's cool. I like the fact that you can give it more or less settings. That's, I like that. I think ultimately with my three phase motor controller, what I want is um, so it would be one accelerator control, no no braking, nothing to do with the brakes. I just want it easy, easy to install. So what I want mine to do is as I accelerate down, yeah, the the controller will will know that my acceleration call is more than my speed call, my speed feedback. So it will automatically go into drive mode and start driving the motor faster and faster until it reaches where I want to be, re reaches an equilibrium. And for example, if I pull my foot off the accelerator slightly, just like you would in a combustion engine car, <laughs> pointing at my car outside, I don't know why, <laughs> just like you would with a combustion engine car, when that pedal comes off, the microcontroller will see that the speed is quicker than my call. So it's like a PID controller, um, but we'll go into that more later when we do the three phase motor controller. So when your foot comes off, it'll realise that hold on, Jace is Jace is wanting to slow down or he wouldn't have took his foot off. So actually we're gonna do a little bit of regen. Now what I want to happen is the further I pull my foot off, the more regen happens. See what I mean? Does that make sense? So say like I'm driving, put my foot down, there's no regen, it's all drive, and I take my foot off slightly. I want there to be a slight bit of regen. And the further I take my foot off, to, to foot off the pedal completely, I want maximum regen. And, and I think that would emulate engine braking in, a, in an ice car. You know, an internal combustion engine car. You think about it, when you've got your foot at an equilibrium, you've got enough fuel being injected in to counteract the uh, compression ratio, the compression of the pistons, <laughs> and the car moving. Um, and as you slightly pull it off, less fuel goes in, so you get a little bit of an engine brake. And as you pull it off, uh, you know, fully, you get more and more and more. So that's what I want mine to do. But for today, we're just going to look at a, a variable pot to look um, because you can do this however you want. You can have a separate brake pedal. Oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> that's the that's the one way. I'm getting away with myself. So you can have the brake pedal, the accelerator pedal, do it. You can have a set level like Tesla does, or you know, a separate brake pedal. Uh, for me, that's 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 not what I want at all. But you could do that. You can have a separate brake pedal, and you'd have to put it in the code that only allow braking once the accelerator pedal's let go. So you can't you can't brake while you're accelerating. That would just be silly. But yeah, that's cool. Anyway, those are the three ways. And the way I'm going to ultimately do it is with all on the accelerator pedal to pretty much emulate a combustion engine. Cool. Right then, so let's spin these up and have a little demonstration and I'll try and explain what's happening whilst you can see it happening. <clears throat> to start with, I want to show you that using this technique even runs at very low RPMs. So if I increase my brake in with the pot over here, Now that's that motor slowing down is the drag of the brake in, fighting against the other one. It's, and you can hear, you can hear the PWM tone. And as I back off, it goes up again. So, yeah, it runs on very low RPM. Now what I'm going to do is spin these little motors up so they're generating about 60 volts. Well, the top one is generating about 60 volts. And here's the setup. Bridge rectifier as before. So same <laughs> same setup as before. Five five volts at one amp into the into the stator coils. And I'm just taking I'm harnessing whatever comes out of the uh, rotor coil. So it's bridge rectified. Positive goes straight into whatever power source you want. Negative from the power source comes it through the IGPTs and back into the load, back into the negative side. And this voltmeter, DC voltmeter, is reading our 
cap. I've also got a bulb here and I'll show you why in a minute. So the this bulb is going to emulate two things in a minute. It's going to emulate A being a resistive load and B being a DC to DC boost converter. Right, so let's speed up our motors so we're generating about 60 volts DC. About 2,000 RPM, say, so that'd be cool. That'd be running down a hill at 30 miles an hour, something like that. And let's see what we're looking like here. Let's increase the PWM on the on the generator motor. See, as I'm increasing it, there's more and more drag. Now that's maximum, so that's the full amount of brake. We've got nine volts in our in our capacitor and our resistive load is dissipating all that power which is breaking our motor. Now let's turn the braking down. Right, now let's remove our resistive load for a minute. We don't want that. And now so we've got and we're just gonna capture the power into this capacitor. I want, to, I want to show you how quickly a capacitor can capture that power. I'll ramp it up. Now you're going to hear the motor break, but then, then it's going to, the break-in effect is going to disappear as the capacitor charges up. So this just shows you that you need a, a good sized capacitor to be able to take enough power. Full on break-in. But you can see that as the voltage of the capacitor rises, um, there's no more pressure on the on the generator anymore to generate. So it's now it's pretty much free running, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to discharge that capacitor quick. So now what we've got is a super capacitor bank, a little model one. So it's um, 16 volt, uh, six super capacitors in series, 500 farads each. And at the minute, they're completely discharged. See, I've got the voltmeter across them. So you see now, these will be able to store up some energy for some time. So say we're rolling down a hill. Obviously, we've got a small motor, small capacitor bank, so it's all sort of relative. Let's increase the braking power. Right, there we are. We're really braking now. You can hear the, the better effect that the supercapacitors are having. And we can decrease the break in. We can have a little bit of break in. We can have more break in. Full break in, right? That's full P 100% duty cycle PWM.